the tickets for you all this week. Actor Ed Begley Jr. is going to join me tomorrow. He's got a book we're going to talk about. I love him and all those Christopher Guest movies. Uh, very funny dude. He's done some dramatic stuff along the way as well. Wasn't he on St. Elsewhere 100 years ago? For those of you old enough to remember that show, early Howie Mandel. Of course, his father, Ed Begley Sr., was in a classic movie called 12 Angry Men. Great film. Yeah, I watched that on the way back from Vegas on the plane. What were they so mad about? You know what? It was hard to tell, except they were hot and they were sequestered. They were a jury. And they were really trying to figure out if this dude had done what he was accused of doing. Right, and it seemed like an open and shut case. Mm -hmm. I like the version of that where it was Polly Shore just trying to milk being on jury duty. I believe that movie was called One Happy Guy <laughs> and 11 Angry People. That's exactly what it was called. Who was the female lead in jury duty Oof. with Polly Shore? Have you seen that Polly Shore is... Trying um, to play Richard Simmons. Yes. Yeah, I love Like it. he met with Richard Simmons, yeah. who hasn't been seen in public in years. Pauly Shore, Tia Carrere, remember her from Wayne's World? She was the... She was the female lead in Jury Duty. That's right. Also starred the great Stanley Tucci in Good Jury cast. Duty. Brian Doyle Murray, he's fantastic. There you go. Abe Vigoda. The Fish. He was the judge. Judge Fish. Yeah. Well, Judge Powell, but he was known <laughs> as the Fish. <laughs> right. <clears throat> well, listen, we haven't had Pauly Shore on this program in a long time. But I would like uh, very much to see him play Richard Simmons. Um, I had Shake Shack over the weekend for the first time. Oh. And? Not here. Uh, we've been downtown across the street from a Shake Shack for over a year. And I haven't gone across the street to ever get Shake Shack. But they put a new one out in my neck of the woods. It was fine. It yeah, was good. It's good. It's as advertised, yeah, right? It's a good burger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good burger, good shakes. Nothing that's going to change your life, but it's good. Yeah, I mean, it's... Except more and more of these places now, you have to use the kiosk when you walk in. There's like an iPad and you put your order on it. And, you know, back in the day, I think if you were like the first place to do this, that would have been pretty cool. And the thought is, hey, this way, we'll never get an order wrong. Because Unless it says... Do. It says right on the screen what you want, how you want it, right? But there are still people in the back working and putting these things together. And there is the fallibility of humans. So it sounds like a great idea. But like when we were putting in what we wanted, the screen would keep coming up. Your order is out of sync. And I go, I don't know what that means. I thought maybe it was just a little glitch in that particular iPad. So we move one I iPad down. We've got a pretty extensive order because it's me and Gwen and our daughter. And so we put the whole thing in again. Your order is out of sync. We're just trying to check out. We're not trying to make this into a whole production. Just trying to check out, you know, and then you go to your table, you got a number and you wait for it. Now, there are people who opt to order at the counter. You can do that too. Out of sync. So I march up to the thing. I go, yo. I look at the guy who looks like a manager. I go, what is out of sync? And he goes, um, I don't know. I go, it's over here on your iPads. Order's out of sync. What does that mean? And he goes, did you try to order something with avocado? Yes. We're out of avocado. Okay. Because you're going to have a lot of people, you know, doing things like that, having no idea what out of sync means. Like, the computer didn't know that they were... I go, okay. It's it's all this, like, fake convenience where you're like, this is just making it harder. I mean... Now, again, you do have the option of going up, but when we walked in, it was a big, long line. I was like, well, let's just use the iPads. Simple. Like, McDonald's now, they don't even want to know... They don't want to know from people walking on the counter. You do it all in the kiosk, and that's how all these places are going to be. But it's not much better at the counter either. I, I was... No, but you can talk to a person and go... <laughs> I want avocado, and they go, we're out of avocado. Okay. Just go around a sink and then walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Your order is out of sync. The Chipotle yeah. over by me and Bill is open, which I can't believe. I've, I've never known a Chipotle to stay open 
till 11 p.m., but yeah. this one stays open till 11. And I was out yesterday, um, and I was coming home, and it was like 9. I was like, you know what? I've never been to Chipotle after 9 o'clock. I was like, Ooh, there's like a new thing dark. for you, yeah. Chipotle after dark. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, let me just try this out. Let me see what it is. So, so I, I walk in, and there's not a big line. I can see through the window there's not a big line. But when I get up there, uh, I walk in, immediately they're like, so we're out. Literally, she starts naming stuff. Right. She's like, we're out of white rice, brown rice, lettuce, <laughs> avocado. Or, or yeah, you don't want to get there too late. Gu- guacamole, yeah. cheese, green salt. I'm like, she's just going down the line, and the two black girls in front of me, they look at each other and say, <laughs> And they just leave. They walk. Because yeah, they don't have anything. I'm like so, why are you open? Like why why are you open? Because it says on the hours they got to be open, but it doesn't mean they want to work. So, so I'm like, so I get up there and I'm looking at all the trays that are like not empty because I know I'm like, if you're, I'm not gonna ask for anything extra. Like if it's not there, I'm not even gonna say like, do you have any more in the back? And so I go, I order my stuff. And then at the end, out of white rice, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was like going to, and it was like, it was like, oh yeah, and chickens are, are on the way. I'm like, so you guys don't have the main protein. You I just go, like, what do you have? What do you have? Well, that's and essentially I'll, what I did. Whatever, yeah, I'll cobble together something. Whatever was in front of me, that's what I took. And then at the end, um, they're like. I was like, you guys have vinaigrettes? You guys never have vinaigrettes. <laughs> like, I saw it in the cooler. I'm like, usually they, they don't have it, but they had a plethora of vinaigrettes. I was like, give me a vinaigrette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the one thing you Would you are- say I have a plethora of vinaigrettes? Plethora. Oh, yes, one- you have a plethora. <laughs> the one thing you guys are always out of, you have in stock, but everything else, out of stock. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me get lettuce and vinaigrette since that's what you guys. Uh, the Chipotle uh, near me is open till 11. That's That must be and a new thing. I didn't know that I don't they know. did that. But, hell, I was about to have me a vinaigrette soup. I'm like, well, y'all ain't going to need these. There's a woman, uh, maybe a teenage girl, young girl, who was working for Chipotle in Kansas. And they made news today because she's suing Chipotle because her manager, she wears a hijab. And her manager kept tugging at it <laughs> and, com- and complaining about her wearing it, just trying to get under her skin. And complaining and complaining and Literally. making fun of her. Can you just let people be? Like, well, why do my, people have to be such well, jerks? Well, this is the thing, though, is it's being turned into a religious freedom thing, which it is technically because she's Muslim. She's supposed to wear the hijab. My thought is if you're the manager, I would want people with their hair covered. Like, who? he like, was giving her a hard time making fun of her for having to wear it or whatever, and I guess... The last straw was he like pulled at it and her hair, whatever. But just because but, you wear a hijab doesn't mean it's clean. And, and no, just but you wear a doesn't mean it's clean. But I would rather have someone with their head covered. And also, this doesn't sound like the manager was like, hey, is this clean? It sounds like he was just being a douche. No, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah, he's making like, fun of her for being Muslim, essentially. I, but it's like. Which is fine. Just don't touch her. Well, <laughs> I've seen people wear work shirts. Do it and, verbally. I've seen people wear work shirts. And off the and clock. Yeah, like don't make fun of her at work. Just wait. Till later, I, like, I, if you were a manager, I think I'd be like, Yeah, what? more people want to cover their hair. And Happier I am. Fewer complaints I'll get. You don't know who's an undercover boss. <laughs> they might be like a district manager for corporate Chipotle. <laughs> undercover pulling he jobs off of girls' heads. Well, it could be like a, a just like you know how we get phishing emails to test us. Well, it might be a phishing person like waiting to see if you follow protocol. Well, I'm sure. Who, that, who's I'm the sure boss that, in this scenario? I, I was going to say, in this scenario, yeah, who is checking for protocol? I'm saying the hijab, the the worker wearing a hijab, she could be like a manager or something. Oh, she is the undercover yeah, boss. Yeah, and I he's see. like making well, her feel he uncomfortable. Failed. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, she didn't just show up one day. She was one of his employees, and he was giving her a hard time. And then part of the complaint was that he clearly cut back my hours because I had complained. Or ask them to stop, blah, blah, blah. That's hella illegal. So she's, she's suing uh, Chipotle. Um, so we go to the Shake Shack after my daughter's school bash. Like they have this fall ice cream social thing every year. And it's fine. There's like, you know, people jumping around and you can get cotton candy. It's fine. It's, a, it's an elementary school party. So it's mostly the parents shooting the crap and the kids are running around. But the DJ there, who is a guy they've had a couple years in a row, and I didn't get his name. He does fine work. But the dude is playing like you shook me all night long. And I just, my ears perked up, and I was like, what? A, listen, it's a crowd pleaser in general. Right. But at an event where it's all like second and third graders running around. It's a weird fr- choice. It's a weird choice. 
knocking me out. This one's well, for the bad. So, yeah. Guys. Yeah. I'm standing there. My daughter's making like, she's got the big bubble hoop, mm-hmm. you know, and she's having fun. I'm just standing there talking to one of the moms. And I look over and I'm like, yes, this is a, a great party song. So I don't know if this dude just had like party playlist, you know, and let it roll. But I was like, I go, wow, this is. I'm like, hey, could you play closer by Nine Inch Nails? <laughs> that one might be a little you much. You take requests. Yeah. I'll give you the no radio, requests, ver- man. The no radio requests. version. No requests. So I'm standing there, obviously bobbing my head uh, at the second grade ice cream social. Okay, who sings this? <laughs> Don't Google. Uh, Don't Google. Bob Seeger. <laughs> How did you get Bob Seeger? I don't know. How'd That's you pull that out of your you've ass? ever said Bob, Bob Seeger. Se- you've never said those two words. Someone requested it at the wedding over the weekend, so it just was stuck in And my you head. didn't even know who it was? No. Yeah. <laughs> I bet there were no uh, first and second graders running around at that wedding. Now, Alan didn't mention the name of the song. I know. I missed it. Mm-hmm. This is... This is um, ACDC. Hey! Did he Google it? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations. I didn't get, to, I didn't, didn't get a chance How to did finish. you go from Bob Seger to ACDC? I tried to remember the, the little light, high-pitched yet. Dog in the road, bro. That's yeah, yeah the, the high-pitched, still scraggly voice. Like, he has... He's got a, a very gra- gravel. gravelly voice. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it was it. scraggly. scraggly yeah. Well, that works too, yeah. Oh, it just made me laugh when the dude whipped this out. I was like, oh, what a great song for a, an elementary school uh, bash. Let me give you money here. We're the first day back with the buzzard bookie, so I'm, I'm forgetting. My apologies that I have this money to give to you here. Uh, so good luck. It's a thousand bucks from the buzzard bookie. I hope you win. This is your chance to bet with the buzzard bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Grand. That's grand. Enter it now at WMMS.com. I did mention this earlier, just kind of in passing, but, you know, the Browns took a real hammering over the weekend. Uh, but you're fortunate that you are not a Chicago Bears fan because they are just a terrible, terrible football team. Terrible. It, it, like the worst team in a long time. And, um, you know, the Denver Broncos gave up 70 points to the Dolphins in a record-setting game last week, a couple Sundays ago. And the Broncos are still favored over the Bears. Now... Uh, I am genetically a Chicago Bears fan. But um, I certainly hope that um, Cleveland Browns fans can uh, feel that pain because uh, the Bears are just terrible, terrible. And people love to troll me about the Bears. They're always sending me video of like, I'm like, I know. Yeah, you you're know. not telling it's, me you're anything not, I don't know. Trim. You're not getting under my skin. I'm right there with you. Uh, I'm not going to send you back a thumbs up emoji, but that's essentially what it is. So uh, they are one of two winless teams over the past four weeks. Uh, There's only one other team that has not won at all, and that's the Carolina Panthers. Both of them are 0-4. Now, which is interesting because they swapped picks. Yeah. Fat lot of good. Did them. Uh, I don't know if there are any teams that are undefeated. Oh, the Eagles are. Eagles and the Niners are undefeated. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, again, I hate to harp on it, but that Janine Garofalo is unbelievable. The Didn't even play. <laughs> Not even with the 49ers. Janine Garofalo? No. The comedian? She just, she's 59 years old. All right. First of all, we've been through this. <laughs> but the person that you're confusing her with is on the Raiders now and didn't play this week. I don't know who and you're they talking lost. about. Don't know who you're, you're talking about. You're thinking of Jimmy Garoppolo. Never heard Janine that name before Garoppolo in my life. has never He's played never, a down heard, of NFL football. Never heard that name. Um, so anyway, uh, for the people who 
who know I'm a Bears fan and troll me with this stuff. I'm like, you are not trolling me. I know exactly uh, the terrain in which we're currently deployed, and it's just awful. Alan, what the hell were you doing with avocado at a Shake Shack? My wife ordered an avocado burger, and um, they were out of avocado. Well, there you go. Yeah. They, that's not like a, couple of a vegetarian burgers. burger, like it's avocado on a hamburger. By yeah. the way, for people who are unclear, Pound, DJ Wettings, uh, that's what we call him, but he's not the DJ. He's the MC. He's the MC. I'm the rapper. So people are like, how the hell does Pound Cake not know these? First of all, it's not a prerequisite to work here because he's on my show. He's not a DJ on this radio station. He's on this show. It's a talk show. Second of all, he's not the DJ at these weddings. We call him DJ Weddings, but you're the master of ceremonies, right? I say MC Wettings, yeah. Mm -hmm. MC Wettings, right. Yeah, I'm sorry, not DJ Weddings. MC, MC Wettings, Wettings, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, he prefers MC because master gets in a weird area. So, MC Pound Cake or MC Weddings. Alan, I went to a KFC one time, and they told me they were out of chicken. It happened. Man. That'll happen. It's popular Happens chicken. to Popeyes, too. It's popular chicken. But did they yeah. tell you we're out of chicken, or did they say, we out of that? <laughs> Sorry, we out of that. Well, but does KFC still do, like, ham sandwiches? And they still do that? I don't know. I haven't been to KFC in like I haven't a year. Either. Dude, the one those, closest to me shut down, like, a year ago. Those dinner bowls are jumping. I'll tell they you slap, for it. They slap. The, it's, oh, isn't it just like potatoes and it's corn? Mashed potatoes, oh. gravy, corn. Oh. Your worst nightmare. Chicken <laughs> oh God, I'm I'm just. And it's very oh. buttery. The hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. Bruh, it slaps. It's so good. It's so good. It's huge. Slaps. How dare you? Uh, it's, that's the sound it makes when you, after you eat it, it, <laughs> it slaps right through the water to the yeah. bottom of your toilet yeah. bowl. There it is, slapping against yeah. the surface. Whatever, Slap, man. plop, whatever you want to oh, call it. God. You're missing out. Uh huh. You're missing out. Slap, slap, slapping sounds. I could not have mashed potatoes without gravy. I guarantee I am not missing out. I certainly don't feel like I'm missing out. Well, it's not for you. Thank God. It's for America. It's for everyone. I'm going to break here. If uh, you want to get your mitts on those Chelsea Handler tickets, I'll have those a little bit uh, for you later on. Uh, she is coming through to do Playhouse Square, I believe. Chelsea Handler at the Key Bank State Theater on the 20th of this month. A couple of Fridays away. So if you're a Chelsea Handler fan, we'll hook those up later. 35192. Want to text me for anything and we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio 